This amazing brain. In our last lecture we looked at the things that are going into the mouth. We looked over here at not only mouth but other areas which are affecting the functioning of our brain. We defined what the frontal lobe was, where our reason, intellect, judgment and will are, that they're fully developed at the age of 30. Now we're going to have a look at the mental or emotional aspects of the way the brain functions. To do that, we're going to go over the seven laws that govern the functioning of the brain. And the first law must always be Newton's third law of motion. To every action, there is an equal and an opposite reaction. It's the law of cause and effect. Effect follows cause with unvarying degree all through nature. Never should we blame the effect as the cause, and sadly that often happens. I'm going to have a look at a few sadly common things that are happening today in the mental area and we're going to have a look at what they are and what are the possible causes. One is panic attacks. What is a panic attack? A lady told me this, she said she woke up in the middle of the night one night, she's about 53, and she was in total panic. Her heart was racing, her skin was on edge, felt like electricity. She was terrified. She woke up her husband and said, quickly, you must take me to hospital, something terrible is happening to me. He drove very fast, he didn't know what was going on, got to hospital, it was a very busy night. They brought her in, her husband brought her in to the nurse and the nurse said yes and she said something terrible is happening with me my heart is racing my skin's on on edge I'm feeling total terror the nurse said fine go and take a seat we'll be with you shortly now the nurse didn't know and the lady didn't know and her husband didn't know that it would actually be ours the nurse never planned that but what happened was, 15 minutes later, she went and got the doctor. They were about to call her in and an ambulance came in with its siren blazing. There'd been an accident down the road. Someone was dead. Someone else was already on life support. So, of course, the priorities quickly shift. The lady heard the sirens. She saw the people running. And at that point, her mind was diverted. As you will see as we go through these laws, diversion is one of the laws. She was watching what was going on. She saw that a crisis was happening and she watched it all happen. It all took about half an hour before things settled down again. The nurse was about to call her in and then another ambulance arrived with the sirens blazing. Someone had had a cardiac arrest and they were doing mouth to mouth. Can you see the scenario? It was probably about four hours later the lady was sitting there, her husband was asleep. It wasn't the nurse's fault, they had planned to see her, it's just that crisis after crisis after crisis came in. By this stage, in fact within probably half an hour, the lady felt alright, but she thought she'd better stay around. She thought she was going to be seen in the next ten minutes, every ten minutes. She woke her husband, she said, we'll just go home, they're very busy here. They went home, she went to sleep. She woke up in the morning, she felt a little bit silly, but she also knew that what she felt was real. So that day she did a Google search because she had heard the nurse say to another nurse, panic attack, and she thought, I must have had a panic attack. She did a search on the web. She came up with one area that ticked every box for her. Uh, early 50s, starting to go through menopause, had been on the pill for about 10 years when she was younger, da 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 da, she ticked every box. And she searched that line and she came a little bit further and she came to the Anna's Wild Yam Cream, a hormonal balancing cream. She found out that when a woman's on the pill, it boosts estrogen and depletes progesterone. And progesterone is the hormone that keeps you calm that prevents the panic attacks. She thought, well, that's all me. She went a little bit further and you could send away for a DVD called The Dance of the Hormones. And in that DVD, she learned about the importance of the eight laws of health. She learned about the importance of drinking more water, of having a more plant-based diet. She learned about the importance of exercising, of going to bed early. She started to go to bed earlier. She learned 
the dangers of the sugars, the alcohols, the caffeine. So she stopped alcohol, she stopped sugar, she stopped caffeine. She started to use the sunshine a little bit. She checked her home, had fresh air. After two months, she felt fantastic. After two months, her friends were saying to her, what's happened to you? She'd lost 10 kilos in weight. She said, well, I've just been implementing the things that I've heard on this DVD. At the same time, she was taking the Anna's Wild Yam Cream, which was going to boost her progesterone, her happy hormone, and little by little get her estrogen under control. Two and a half months later, she woke in the middle of the night. Panic. Heart was racing, skin felt like it had electricity on it. She was experiencing total terror. This is what her feelings said. You see, the back part of the brain is where the feelings are. And in the first scenario, that had been the boss. But when the feelings started to rise up, quickly frontal lobe kicked in. Frontal lobe kicked in and said, aha, it's one of those panic attacks. Aha, I know what it is now. Aha, I know how to conquer this. What I'm doing, eventually I will not get them. She slipped out of bed. She went in and got a crystal of Celtic salt and a glass of water. She put the kettle on, got a chamomile tea bag went out onto the veranda with her hot cup of tea, still a bit hot to drink. She breathed in deeply. She started to do some stretches. Then she sat down and drank her tea. The whole time this was happening, her heart is pumping, her skin is on edge, her feelings are screaming at her, but she's not listening. Got that? She's not listening. She's basically saying to herself, settle down. This will pass, this will pass. And in 15 minutes, it had passed. She slipped back into bed and went to sleep. Same situation, but seen at, seen at from totally different eyes. What had made the difference? It was knowledge. It was understanding what was happening to her. The old proverb, knowledge is easy to him that understood. She now understood what was causing her panic attack and she knew how to conquer it. She just had to get over this little hiccup. This lady told me that she had about three more panic attacks over the next six months. Last time I talked to her, she said it's three years later and I haven't had another. How nice. You see, the back part of your brain is your feeling part of the brain and it makes a bad boss. It doesn't mean feelings are bad. Feelings are not bad, but they're not a good boss because feelings go up and down like the wind. Her first situation, her feelings were the boss. No wonder. <laughs> That's, that's the only guide she had, was her feelings. But the frontal lobe part of the brain is a very good boss because every decision that this boss makes is made according to reason, intellect, and judgment. Basically, you could call it cognitive behavioral therapy. She just changed the way she saw it. And what enabled her to do that was knowledge. Knowledge on why this was happening and what she could do to overcome it. But let me give you another story, and this, is, this also was told me. Same situation. Rush to casualty. It's a quiet night. So the lady's given Valium to calm her down and a referral to a psychiatrist. She sees the psychiatrist. He says, I found the cause of all your problems. You get panic attacks. Now, the night she got a panic attack, it had a profound effect on her. That made a strong pathway. And when her, when her specialist told her, you get panic attacks, what did that do to that pathway? It made it strong. Yes, put a bit of Rio in it. He said, you'll be on panic attack medication for the rest of your life. May I quickly add here, not every doctor says that, but this one did. She went home. Her mother said, what did the doctor say? He said, I get panic attacks. He said, I'll be on medication for the rest of my life. Can you see what's happening here? The more you frequent those pathways, the stronger they get. Science shows that they are physical pathways in our brain. Two years later, this lady came to Misty Mountain Health Retreat. She's now to the point where she can't drive her car. Her panic attacks are so strong. So I gave her 
a script, a prescription of what to do when the lightning strikes. I said, the first thing I want you to do when you feel that panic arising is laugh. She said, I won't feel like laughing. I said, you're absolutely right, but you will. <laughs> what did I say when I said you will? I made a pathway. I said, just pretend to be a kookaburra. <laughs> Almost makes you giggle. <laughs> and while you're ha <laughs> ha laughing, get a crystal of salt, a glass of water, get a chamomile tea bag, all the things that this previous lady had done. I said, you'll conquer it. But I said, the hardest time will be the first time. Because we like going down the paths of least resistance, don't we? <laughs> and this has got resistance. It's not a well-worn pathway. This is the path of least resistance. Well-worn. It's like going on a bushwalk and being told you can go anywhere but not on the path. It's pretty hard to go through the bush but on the path. Ah, oh, it's easy. That's actually exactly what's happening in your brain. And this lady did it. I don't know anyone that likes being on medication. I don't like it. And I don't know anyone that likes having panic attacks. Eventually, the pathway became stronger and stronger. This is the pathway of conquering panic attacks. And because she stopped frequenting the panic attack pathway, can you see what's happening here? The new pathway is stronger. How long does it take before the new pathway is stronger than the old pathway? Let's make that a little bit thinner. Science shows us it takes 21 days, 21 days to create a new habit, 21 days before her old pathway, the panic attack pathway, is replaced by a new pathway. The new pathway is stronger than the old pathway. And when the new pathway is stronger than the old pathway, when something stressful arises, guess where she goes? down the new pathway. Isn't that good news? <laughs> this lady rewired her brain and science shows us that we can be rewiring our brain right up until the day we die. That's the good news. You've heard the old saying, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Wrong. You can. <laughs> Where there's a will, there's a way. If you say you can, you will. If you say you can't, you're right. You won't. It's as simple as that. You see, our feelings are like a wild horse and they go all over the place. They need the bridle, woo up, woo up. Your bridle is your frontal lobe. That's your board of senses. That's your board of critiques. And can you see if someone is taking all of this into their body, their board of senses, their critiques are not very loud. They can hardly hear them. <laughs> What about depression? By the way, I've seen many people conquer their panic attacks by the things that I just described. Isn't that good news? Depression is not a cause. Depression is an effect. The medical definition of depression is a chemical imbalance in the brain. What's my next question? Why? What has caused this imbalance? Let's have a look at what causes the highs. Sugar causes a high, wheat causes a high, caffeine causes a high, alcohol causes a high, tobacco causes a high, MSG causes a high. All of these highs come with corresponding lows. They're transitory highs. They're just crutches. Oh, they just hold you up for a little time. But because they are transitory, because they are brief, because they are really delusive, they all come with the corresponding lows. Sugar blues, that's why the book's called Sugar Blues. That's the wheat blues. We've got another book called Caffeine Blues. They all cause the blues. They give an initial brief high, but they come along with this long corresponding low. What's a hangover? It's not a very real low. Desperately doing anything to get the next cigarette. Desperately. We've got one we haven't got here, which is drugs. I can't understand myself, a beautiful young girl, going into prostitution to feed her drug habit. That's the effect that the high of the drug does. They're constantly going for it again to try and maintain that high. 
These are all transitory highs coming along with very real lows. Of themselves and absolutely together, they can cause depression. Depression is a chemical imbalance in the brain. A chemical imbalance can be caused by a lack, so we've got a lack of oxygen. Oxygen vitalizes, invigorates and electrifies the body. Lack of oxygen can cause depression. Lack of exercise can be one of the causes of lack of oxygen. Lack of sunshine. Sunshine in the day causes a release of serotonin at night. And serotonin is a hormone that makes you feel good. Lack of sleep can cause depression, especially in the hours of powers that we talked about. You see, when you're sleeping in the proper hours, there's a release of serotonin. So sunshine and sleep are both affecting the release of the serotonin. Lack of water. Our brain's a hydroelectric system. Lack of water, lack of hydro, lack of electricity. Negative thought patterns can be developed in a brain that is dehydrated. Lack of rest. Lack of rest can be different to lack of sleep. If you're a computer programmer, your rest might be climbing mountains. We've got many monomaniacs today. Have you heard of a monomaniac? A monomaniac is someone who only develops one part of their brain. My son William's in Brisbane at the moment and he's getting very busy as a handyman. <laughs> he was brought up on the farm. He knows how to do lots of things. He said no one knows how to do anything in the home. People get him to go and change a tire. People get him to go and fix a washer on the tap. <laughs> And the people are doing that are usually computer experts. They're monomaniacs. There's only one part of their brain that's developed and that's the technology part of the brain. There are many men today who can't chop wood, they can't change a tire, they don't know how to do a grease and oil change on their car, they don't know a lot of basics, maintenance around homes. And there are a lot of ladies who they're very good on the computer but they can't knit, they can't sew, they can't cook, they can't clean, they can't parent. There are so many who don't know the basics today. They're monomaniacs, just developed one part. You see, an imbalance is causing depression. And when you have a monomaniac, it creates an imbalance. So we'll have to put here, lack of balance. And lack of balance can be created by a lack of rest. Often if I've been consulting with people all day, lecturing all day, I'll go home, get on my hands and knees and dig weeds. Or I'll go and sew or I'll go and knit, or I'll go and cook. <laughs> Something totally different to what I've been doing all day. We need to have a balance in our brain. And to have a balance in our brain, we need to rest our brain. And one of the best ways to rest the literary part of our brain is to climb a mountain. <laughs> so it's just doing something different can be the best rest that you give other parts of your brain. In in Exodus, the Bible talks about a special rest that God gave. And I read the Bible when I was 25, and I got to Exodus where the Ten Commandments are. In the Fourth Commandment, God said, Six days shalt thou labor and do all their work, but on the seventh day, rest, rest. I remember as a young mother, I thought, how do I do that? And then I realized that if I have a visitor coming, I've got everything ready. If I'm going out, I've got everything ready. I'm just going to see that day, the seventh day that the Bible talks about, and I'm not going to do any cooking on that day. I'm not going to do any vacuuming. I'm not going to do any washing, unless a child vomits, and I might. <laughs> I might wash. So I made prep so that I could do that. You see, being pregnant or breastfeeding non-stop for 14 years, I was a very busy lady and I'm up in a rainforest and there's no electricity, so I'm busy. But you know, it revolutionized my life and it gave me the rest and the balance in other areas. I used to go on bushwalks with the kids. I'd, I'd sit and chat with the kids. Usually they'd say, Mum, look at this. And I'd say, yeah, I'll just put the load of washing on the line. Yeah, I'll just do this. I'll just... <laughs> and this gave me one-to-one -one with the children. 
And still to this day, Michael and I love work. We never stop, except for one day where we stop. <laughs> we get the rest and we give our brain the balance. Lack of progesterone can cause depression because progesterone is called the happy hormone. I meet many women in menopause age who are suffering de from depression and when I do a history on them, they are on the pill. The pill depleted their progesterone, boosts their estrogen and basically those levels are still out. I've seen many people, especially women, conquer depression by going on the Anna's Wild Yam Cream, boosting progesterone, implementing the eight laws of health, and then little by little they're able to ease off their antidepressants. Good news. Lack of minerals can cause depression. There are two minerals that work together. One is calcium and the other is magnesium. And these two minerals are what gets the messages down that arm. Calcium constricts, magnesium relaxes. Calcium constricts, magnesium relaxes. This is happening split second. That's how the messages come down that arm. Lack of calcium and or lack of magnesium can both cause a deficiency in the messages ability to get down that arm. Lack of Vitamins, especially the B vitamins. The B vitamins are probably the most famous vitamins in uh, helping people get proper brain function. But probably the most famous of all the B vitamins is niacin, nicotinic acid. About 1% of psychiatrists today are using nutritional medicine to help mental illness, and that would be their most famous. Some doctors are using up to about 10,000 milligrams of nicotinic acid, that's 10 grams. Not forever, it's just initially till we conquer the situation. We're looking at the imbalance that can be caused, or the imbalance that can cause depression, excess. Excess food can cause depression. This is a big one in Australia today. Australia is suffering from an over and abundance of food and an overeating of food. When the stomach is burdened with too much food, the nerves are irritated and that can irritate the whole system, especially the brain. Excess stimulation. This is the opposite to rest. One of the best things parents can do for their children is keep life simple have big expeditions into the bush to get kindling. <laughs> big expeditions into the garden to kill the enemy. Boys love that, pull all the weeds out. <laughs> Picking up the pine cones for the fire. These are the things that I do with my grandchildren. And you know, when they visit me, they say, have you got any work for us, Grandma? We're good workers. So good to develop really good work ethics in the children. When Parents don't teach their children to work, they deprive them of the joy of accomplishment, which is a lovely thing. Many kids today don't know how to work, but they're pretty proficient on the iPad. A lot of, lot of um, parents are really proud when their two-year-old can handle the iPhone or the iPod. It is nothing to be proud of. Kids are smart. <laughs> The most important thing children should be learning is to obey their parents, let them know there's a consequence if they're not, and use the will to develop their minds so that their intellects develop the way it's supposed to develop. So make sure there are times of quiet. Excess pain can cause depression. Pain is debilitating. One has to look at why the pain is there. I'm surprised at how many times we're able to reduce pain by simple hydrotherapy treatments or poultices. We're looking at what causes a chemical imbalance in the brain. The brain can be poisoned. This in itself is causing an imbalance. What poisons the brain? Mercury, all your heavy metals poison the brain. Alcohol poisons the brain. MSG poisons the brain. Chemicals poison the brain. Mold poisons the brain. Drugs poison the brain. These all have a poisoning effect. 
causing neurodegeneration, which of course is, is the cause of dementia. Alzheimer's. Something else can poison the brain and that is negative thoughts. We have no say over what people say to us, but we have total say over what we do with what they say to us. You see, a negative thought may come into our mind. And AA say this, I think it's well said. We have no say over the first thought, but we have total say af over every thought after that. You see, a thought is like a breeze. Notice that this nerve cell is like a tree. And here are all the little branches. A breeze comes in and it wafts through the dendrites, the branches of the tree. And it is our choice whether we keep that thought or we let it keep going. And if we keep that thought, it's basically like we build a little nest in the dendrites. And if it's a negative thought, Dr. Carolyn Leaf in her book, Who Switched Off My Brain, she shows how little thorns can grow in between the dendrites when we entertain or cherish negativity. And those little thorns have the ability to damage the tissues. These are your psychosomatic diseases. What does cherish mean? Love. What does entertain mean? Come in, stay for a meal, actually stay the night. Do we do that to negative thoughts? No, they must be allowed to keep going. One girl said, I get negative thoughts coming in all the time. I said, join the club. We all do. It's what we do with them. Let them keep going. Don't let them build a nest in your dendrites, which causes thorns to develop, which can be very damaging. One lady said it to me. She said, I, I like it. I like to think of it like this. We've got our remote control from the television. Something comes on that we don't want, we just change channel. We just change channel. We just change channel. And that's what you can do with negative thoughts. Just change channel, just change channel. And remember, practice makes perfect and practice makes permanent. What this means is, what I've shown you this morning, is that these things are something we can make a choice on and as you can see they have a dramatic effect on the way we think. Dr. Neil Nedley stated in his lecture that I attended on depression, he said genetics cannot cause depression. Isn't that good news? Even if both our parents committed suicide, we need never go there. Remember genetics loads the gun, lifestyle pulls the trigger. Genetics cannot cause depression. Lifestyle tragedy cannot cause depression, and every heart has its sorrow. It's not what happens to us, it's what we do with it. But he said, you throw a few of these in, he calls them hits, and the scales are tipped. We have no say over genetics, we have no say over lifestyle tragedy, but we have total say over this. Never would I want anyone to think that I'm implying it is their fault they have depression. No, 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 many are sick through ignorance. And most people don't know the power of these simple lifestyle changes that can directly affect the way that we think. Dr. Neil Nedley stated that there are over a hundred causes of depression. I haven't given you a hundred here, but I've given you quite a few. No, depression is not a cause, depression is effect. And that's why the detective hat has to go on and have a look at all the things that may have brought together so that the effect of depression is happening.